This is Family Time 78, and we're talking about our issues. We're moving toward responsible decision making as one of our core social emotional learning competencies. And responsible decision making really starts with us identifying the areas of need in our lives. So that's all we're doing this week, is I want you to identify some issues in your life, to sort of air things out, to be open and honest about the things in your life that are challenging, that are concerning, things that you want to work on and improve. That's how we begin any journey is deciding where it is we want to go. And I think it's important to understand, for me, identifying issues isn't complaining. I don't, I don't believe in complaining. It's the bottom line. Sometimes I feel a little bad for my own children because... I'll tell them, hey, when complaining solves a problem, we'll consider it. Until then, we're not complaining. I want them to be open and honest about the things that are bothering them. I appreciate when they tell me about their day, the things that were stressful, the conflicts they had. But there's a thin line between just complaining to complain and actually identifying issues with the intent of solving a problem. And sometimes we do just want to vent a little bit. And if that actually solves a problem, if we we're just frustrating about, frustrated about something and sharing it, talking about it, makes us feel better and solves the problem, well, that's fine. But it's easy for us to fall into the trap of complaining for the sake of complaining. Or really, complaining for the sake of attention. A lot of times, we don't really want a problem to be solved because we want to complain about it. We want the attention that comes from that. And I think, really, more often than that, we want the connection that comes from having a problem. People can relate to having a hard time. And if we're talking with people, it becomes very easy for us to commiserate about our own challenges. And we all have a desire, a need for a sense of belonging. That kind of is an an easy way to tie in with a group, to share similar problems. Again, some of that's not bad. But when, it's, when we're only complaining for that attention and we're not trying to solve any problems, I don't have a lot of time for that. What I want us to do what I want you to do this week is identify some issues and be honest. What are the things that are troublesome in your life? But don't just sit and complain and complain and this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. Let's try to identify a few things that are genuine issues. And let's Try to get to the root of the problem. That's another thing. We often attack issues in our lives, but it's sort of like the hydra in Greek mythology. We start cutting these heads off just for two more to grow back in its place because we're not getting to the heart of the hydra. We're not getting to the root of the problem. We're busy looking at surface level issues and we're not really getting to what's causing the problem. And that can
can be hard to identify. But that's why we're going to spend some time practicing it. I want you to think about two different categories of issues in your life. First, identify some situational issues. Those would be things that exist in our life environmentally, situationally, things that stress you out, challenges that you have. Could be family, friends, relationships, could be work, responsibilities you have at home, those sorts of things. Those are the situational issues we're talking about. And that's really just identifying what are some things that stress you out, that are challenges you have in your life. We all have them. Everyone does. That's something that took me a while to realize. I suppose on an intellectual level, for most of my life, I understood that, okay, everybody has problems, everybody has issues, everybody has hopes and fears and dreams and heartache and hardships. But it's easy for us to feel like our problems are unique to us. In some ways, they are. No one is ever going to feel the same exactly the same about a situation. But when I really spent time connecting with other people, trying to empathize with other people, it made it so much easier to recognize that we all have issues. We all have fears, we all have insecurities, we all have anxieties. And that can be, should be, a unifying force. Too often in our lives, in the world, we let that be a source of conflict. We see it with political parties. We see it with any social situation where we fall into toxic groups. It's not bad to belong to a group. Again, we all need that sense of belonging. But when we fall into these negative, I'm on one side, you're on the other side, that sort of toxic tribalism, I think more often than not, that stems from fear, from discomfort. But it would be so much better when we can recognize that I have these fears, I have these challenges, I have these issues, and so do you. You also have issues. Maybe they're the same or similar, and we're approaching them from two different ends of a spectrum. Maybe your issues are completely different than mine, and I don't understand yours. But I really think that can be a unifying thing. If we were just all a little more open about the real heart of the issue, about what we're really afraid of, about what's really stressing us out, about how the challenges are really impacting us on a personal level. And that's the next thing. I want you to identify those situational issues, things that maybe we don't have total control over. There are always going to be situational things in our lives that it's like the weather. We're not able to control the weather. That gets back to complaining. 
It always interests me a little bit when people complain about things like the weather. We don't have any control there. Outside of our personal decisions. Complaining about a rainy day isn't going to make it stop raining. Complaining about the cold isn't going to make the sun come out and warm things up. We can prepare for the weather. We can dress for the weather. We can change our plans if we need to. We only have control of our decisions. We can't control the weather. <laughs> Same with people. We're not able to control other people, their decisions, their beliefs, their views, how they feel. Sometimes we can influence people, hopefully in a positive way. But complaining about someone else's behaviors is silly to me. We're not able to change someone else's behaviors. We can control our behavior. So maybe a situational issue might be the relationship you have with someone else. Might be something at work. Something at school. Whatever it is. But then the next thing I want us to identify is our personal issues. These are really our own areas of desired improvement. These could be things like maybe we feel we have a hard time managing our stress. Maybe we are unhappy about the way we deal with our anger. Those are personal issues. And it's important to be honest about those things as well. For me, if I'm going through situational issues and personal issues, situationally, I'm very, very fortunate that I love my job, I love my family, my friend groups. Very fortunate. So the things that are sort of situational issues for me are things that connect to those aspects of my life that are important. And something that's sometimes stressful isn't necessarily bad. Stress can even be a positive thing. We need some stress to learn and grow and adapt. But I think of my family life an issue is the balance between support and struggle, for instance. When I'm working with, doing anything with my own children or working with my students, I'm always trying to find that balance of how much just unconditional support do I give versus how much do I, do I let the individual struggle learn some things on, on his or her own. That, that's an issue that I have. That's something that concerns me, something I think about quite a bit. With my children or with my students, a concern of mine is if I'm doing the right things to meet their needs, if I'm meeting the correct needs. Those are sort of situational issues. Something that's frustrating in education and as a parent is the realization that I'm not able to solve every problem for my children or my students. That's an issue. That's something that concerns me, something that I think about. I wouldn't even consider it a bad thing. And I tried to detach myself a little bit once I've identified an issue to try to take a step back and say, well, this, this is the thing. So what can I do to address it? And there might be some aspects of the situation that 
I'm not able to totally control. But I can realize, okay, maybe it stresses me out at school sometimes. If I feel like I'm not, if we're doing social emotional stuff, and I feel like, wow, I, I don't feel like we're totally meeting all the social emotional needs of our students. What can I try to do to make things a little bit better? How can I try to balance serving those needs and still letting students be independent thinkers and letting them struggle a little bit and then being there with the proper supports? If I think of my personal issues, I would probably point out things like I tend to be pretty bullheaded in the sense that, honestly, I've never really liked being told what to do. My, I think my parents can attest to that, other family members, I think probably anyone who's ever been in a relationship with me can probably attest to that. Something I try to address and I've tried to be a lot better at as a communicator, as someone who tries to concede points and issues, but I do tend to be pretty bullheaded. I like to do things the way I like to do things and I don't like being told what to do. Even in a relationship, I, I have no problem being asked to do something. I love helping people, but there's something about just someone trying to tell me what I should be doing. That's, that's an issue that I know I have to deal with. Sometimes I can be sort of, I can be maybe independent to a point that is challenging for other people in my life. That I'm sort of, that I'm often happy to just go about and do things on my own. And that can be hard in a relationship. Those are issues that I know that I have that I try to continually work on. When I was a younger man, I had a very, I would say, bad temper where I would let things sort of build up emotionally and then I would lash out. When I was, thankfully, much younger, things that I look back on now that I think are so silly that I would be so embarrassed about now, yelling and punching something and doing something like that, that from my perspective, now is so immature and so silly and doesn't solve the problem. Doesn't solve the root problem. That's probably a much unhealthier version of complaining that I talked about. Doesn't solve the problem. So that's something I've worked on a lot in my life. I'd like to think now I do not have very many temperamental outbursts. I don't have very many knee-jerk reactions like that. But those are the sorts of things we're talking about. And I've kind of rambled on a little bit with this family time. But I want us to get something out of identifying our issues. It's not just an airing of grievances. It's not just complaining. It's not transferring blame to other people or other situations and feeling like we're locked into those scenarios. It's about honestly identifying the situational things that do cause us stress or trauma or just challenge. And it's about being open and honest about our own issues that we want to address. Not worried about what someone else tells us we should be working on. It's our own opinion for ourselves. 
what do we want to work on? And that's it. That's how we're starting our look at responsible decision making. We're not even putting anything into practice right now. We're just trying to dig a little deeper and be honest about the issues in our lives because we all have them. And that's a unifying thing. Have a great week. Watch out.